Hello and welcome to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. This is a surprise midweek video to examine whether Frostpunk 2 will work on Linux. But first, before we proceed any further into the video, I'd like to thank my channel member that get early access to videos such as this one right here, as well as a little badge next to the name for both videos and live streams that show they are a supporter of mine and I also get a notification so that I get priority response to videos. Anyway, let's get into the video. This is Linux. How can you tell? Well, we just do this. That looks like Linux. It is Linux. This here. This is Frostpunk 2. This game has not yet been released to the public entirely. I have the early release, uh, early access version of it. I love this game. I loved the first game. Now, shall we see if it works? Now, it's not going to go through the first time, first time setup stuff because I've already attempted to record this video, but because OBS decided to not work with me, this is actually my second attempt at recording the video. So what you're going to see is what you would expect to see for running this the first time. Uh, people at 11-bit studios have no idea that I'm doing this video. So this is an entirely unfiltered, unadulterated no, please don't do this, please don't do that. This is a, you're getting it how you would expect to get it on Linux for the first time. Now, compiling shaders, that's entirely fine. So, this is going to be a first time push through. We're just going to do the prologue. There's not going to be anything else. Now, what we'll see here is the settings. They are all as expected. I'm just going to turn this down just a smidge. Okay, so the settings are all working as intended. Uh, the Twitch integration stuff works fantastically. I love that. Uh, the languages are all there. The inputs. It's nice to see that they're all visible, which is good. Uh, audio, as you can hear, it works. Um, with... The graphic settings, for me, this is the exact same thing as I would expect to see on Windows. And in fact, this is the exact same thing I would see on Windows. The only difference is this upscaling quality is balanced instead of quality. And it's just erred on the side of caution and gone with medium instead of high. You know what? For it being through a compatibility layer in the form of Proton, that's not bad. Clicking recommended, it just does what it thinks it needs to. I'm just going to turn that to... Uh, let's go with the exact same as what I have on uh, Windows. I would do that. Graphics, and then... High on everything. So this is exactly what I have. How, these are the settings I have on Windows. Oh joy. I needed to start a new story anyway, so that's fine. I realize I've just deleted over my previous save. You know what, that's fine. I needed to do a new story anyway. So, what can you expect with Frostpunk 2? It is 30 years after Frostpunk 1. You have survived the initial and subsequent uh, whiteouts. It's now up to you to expand and make sure your people live. We are going to skip over the cinematics because they work, but this is not why we're here. We are here to actually play the game and see if it performs as expected. So, first things first, we must restart the furnace. Uh, in this case, we will come down to this oil and then try and reach that. So we can then go, thank you very much. We have oil and we have supplies getting that off the ground as soon as we can is a good thing because it then means we don't end up struggling later on ask me how i know about how that is a very common thing you can do i've made that mistake plenty of times now uh, one of the things that i did not notice about this uh campaign area until after the first few times i've done it there's a little uh little thing over here on the other side of the Dreadnought. Now, my suspicions is that is a Victoria-class Dreadnought from the first game. And I love that. I love that 
there are, that there are consistencies between the first and the second game. Uh, I'm just a fan of this game in general. Uh, that is the housing district. What we need to do is turn on the Dreadnought to provide heat for people. We will need a second heating district. Uh, but before we... Well, housing district, not heating. Before we continue any further, we will need food. That is just a common necessity throughout both the Frostpunk games. Food and people's happiness is absolutely something you need to juggle. But, again, this is more of a... This difficulty level is recommended for people who have played Frostpunk at L Frostpunk 1 or have a thing for being tortured. Because it uh, quite literally says, we recommend you play Frostpunk uh, on the lower difficulty levels until you have completed the game for the first time. Or, if you played Frostpunk 1, play it on Survivor difficulty. Or ca um, Captain difficulty. Uh, it's either, off yeah, Officer difficulty, sorry. Now, I played Frostpunk 1. And I have completed Frostpunk 1 plenty of times. So I thought, you know, oh, this can't be so bad, can it? No, it's not. It's not bad. It's torturous. But it it's constantly pouring over everything. Can you actually improve on things? Can you beat yourself over... Well, can you figure out the mistakes you've made and mitigate them? The answer is yes, if you know what you're doing. Or if you've made the same mistake enough times to go, I need to fix this mistake, how do I fix it? So that is a very real reality with this game. And it is fantastic. And I love it greatly. So frost punking is just, well, fr frost breaking is just clearing the ground. Uh, making it so you can actually get access to things. And making sure you can perform as needed. Uh, for certain things, so getting access to food, it just makes the ground build buildable, basically. Uh, it's just bucket wheel excavators, basically. Uh, mo well, yeah, it's just bu bucket wheel excavators. That's what this is. Uh, but, again, fantastic uh, concept, actually. I, I love the idea of uh, roving bucket wheel excavators going around and clearing things to make it so you can actually do things and survive. Um, a mysterious symbol, the captain's legacy. You have found someone that belonged to the New London Scouts 3rd Platoon, and they have an obscure insignia. It's your choice to, de to determine whether it symbolizes order or faith. Order and faith are the two routes you can go down in Frostpunk 1. It's specifically the New Home scenario, or a few, or the few others, but in New Home specifically where you can decide how you're going to keep your people in check and keep them happy and keep the discontent low. Hope, or order, or faith. Uh, in my opinion, faith works the best because it has better passive. But in this, I, I like trying the uh, order. But again, that is, uh, that is entirely my opinion, and it is subjective. Again, all of my opinions about uh, this are entirely subjective. Uh, as I've mentioned, 11-Bit Studios have no idea that I'm doing this. So you're getting it as I'm showing it and viewing it. Uh, so preserving food without the uh, thing, yes, we know. Uh, we will place down this housing district. Uh, that house there gets double the heat because it's near generator and also other housing, so that's good. Uh, this has run out of the material in this form. It's run out of prefabs. So, yes, we want to knock that down. And we want to get access to more materials and prefabs. So, in this case, we want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spread to there. And then we want to just place down housing district, or food district, which we can't currently because we need workers. And the workers are currently out frost breaking which again is perfectly reasonable uh, you will need to place down uh, food districts well uh, food storage districts uh, as a thing because you will end up running into your uh, limit uh, food stockpile hubs are really rather important because they also reduce uh, the need for workers in a particular area which is good uh, that was just skipping over the do you actually have access to everything yeah blah -de blah in this case, yes, um, that turning thing that these do, where it just looks like they're spinning in circles on the spot, 
Uh, that appears to be just because of the fact that they're sat, spit up, they're actually trying to move as you pause. So it doesn't quite know how to ha how to handle that, which I find rather funny, because it looks like they're just going, I spin. So this is complaining about the fact that we need more prefabs. Unfortunately for me, I don't have access to prefabs because I did not get access to that. Um, what's this one here? Ah, oh, that's getting me oiled. That's good. Uh, this one. Food. Uh, this has broken, so we'll just... Uh, do that. Uh, these things... Uh, these buildings do break because of the cold. Uh, it's just the fact that things wear out uh, in the extreme temperatures. So... Again, perfectly reasonable. Uh, once one of these runs out, we will just uh, wipe it out. Uh, food stockpile are full. Okay, that's problematic. So what we will do is we will just knock this down uh, to get the prefabs. Let's focus on food. And then I will... Uh, do not resort to extremes. That scenario is, what do you want to do? Do you want to seal club the last remaining, the last known remaining seals in existence? Or do you want to send uh, the elders to death? Uh, in my case, I don't want to send the elders to death or club seals. I just want to make sure they survive. That's all. So I've got no idea if that will take me to it. But in this case, we're at seven weeks to get the stockpile. And looks like we'll be okay. Uh, districts that are, that are affected by squalor, they have a reduced amount they could do. Uh, congratulations, wait until the White House hits. You've survived. So, this is pretty good. It performs as expected, which I absolutely love and will be more more than likely streaming this at some point on linux i love the fact that it works and for a game that isn't even publicly released yet the fact that it does work is amazing uh, i couldn't be more thankful to 11-bit studios for producing such a game that works anyway whenever you use linux do not panic i have been nick you have been amazing and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day Goodbye.